sense to your trading. You know, one of the things we do as traders is, is we put ourselves in a situation where we we're studying so hard, we're working so hard, we're, we're doing all of these different things that we put ourselves into a place where we really overcomplicate things. And one of the things that we have to sometimes do is just back up a little bit and just apply a little bit of common sense and all of a sudden things seem to get clear. Um, one of the issues that i had early on in my trading is i i really was my own worst enemy i i created all of these different things i made everything complicated i well i simply messed things up because i was trying to be the guy who knew everything there was to know about trading everything there was to know about indicators and um, I truly was my own worst enemy and I know there's folks in here right now that might be feeling like that that man I've got to unload all of this baggage I I have complicated this to such an extent that um, I've become my own worst enemy in my trading when when honestly trading is actually pretty simple the, the actual physical act of trading is really simple but it's one of those things where it kind of takes a lifetime to master I don't think you ever really reach the point in trading that you would feel that you are a master trader okay <laughs> yeah me in a bow tie no that's not happening <laughs> that's not happening but I'm going to give you an example here when you take a look at this chart right here this is a chart that I used to try and trade from now I can tell you everything that's on there and the purpose that it was there why I used it but I can also tell you that after years of complicating my trading like that with all of the knowledge and all the different scans, the thousands of scans that I wrote, all of those different things, it didn't make me money. It literally did not make me money. As a matter of fact, I, um, I did a class years ago I called Confessions of a Yo-Yo Trader because um, there would be periods in the market like when we have this massive bull run like we have right now where everything just seemed to work. And I thought it was me. And then something would change in the market and I would lose it all back to the market and a lot of times more because I was so overcomplicated in my trading. Okay. So overcomplicated in my trading that I couldn't, um, I couldn't break through. Um, I had to start to simplify. And so today I wanted to do, um, we've spent a lot of time talking about strategies and things like that. And as we go through, I'm gonna bounce back and forth between presentation and, and probably charts. But just this idea of how we have oftentimes created a situation where we are our own worst enemy in trading because we've overcomplicated. And we give lip service to the idea, keep it simple, but then we just continue to expand it out and make it more and more and more complicated. Okay, so let's talk about some of the basic steps. Competence. Um, we all wanna be competent in our work and what we do but the way I would kind of define competence here is a simple, well thought, careful, ordered common sense. And that's what we do. Those are the kind of strategies that I talk about that I try to teach. It's just that simple, that ordered common sense that we're trying to achieve in our trading. We want that competent feeling in what we're doing and that requires us to go through and, and think about logically, think logically about our trading skills, our trading style. You know, when we, 
and, and this happens, you know, virtually every day. Someone asks me, is this a good trade? Now, and I understand why they ask that position, you know, ask that question. But at the same time, the answer to that is, well, it may be a good trade for me, but is it a good trade for you? Is that the trade? Is that the strategy, the style, whatever it is that you've adapted as a trade? One of the things that, how many of you would say that you've tried to be the master of everything out there in the past? You tried to know everything there was about trading, every style, every candle pattern, you wanted to be the master of all of them. And what you ended up finding is you ended up mastering none of them right you were too scattered you were too all over the place you couldn't focus yeah all strategies you couldn't focus on one particular thing and i think one of the things that um well at least that i hope that i've been able to show is that you don't need to do all of that what you need to do is develop that simple strategy to be the best at one or two things as you can be. Let everyone else do those other high risk strategies or whatever it is out there. And you just settle in to getting really, really good at one or two things. Because I think I've proven over a period of time that that's all you need to do to be successful in trading to get out there and just work through a simple strategy and decide whether that strategy is the right strategy for you. Okay, now we've spent an awful lot of time talking about the 3-8 trap strategy. And if, if it's working for you, I would just say dive in even more. Build that plan, build those rules, build that common sense around that strategy. You know, it was just like <clears throat> if my good buddy Mike Peterson would have come over and, and smacked me in the head with a baseball bat. It wouldn't have been a harder hit than when I realized that I'd wasted all of this time with all of these different strategies when all I really needed to do is follow a trending chart, not try to predict anything, stop the predicting and just follow the trending chart, find a trend, wait for the next entry to come into it. I'm telling you guys that hit me so hard. You, you can't even imagine because I was so upset with myself that I had wasted all of this time trying to be that the smartest guy in the room trying to be that perfect trader out there that could do anything no knew everything but i didn't make any money so um, i had to fess up to that so make your trading simple keep it simple and that's all we really have to do when we think about trading so <clears throat> strategy and knowledge that's one of the first steps and you know, the funny thing is, is traders tend to take all of their time right here. How many would agree that you've spent years with strategies and collecting knowledge about the market? It might be knowledge of indicators. It might be knowledge of scans. It might be knowledge of, you know, whatever it is. You've just spent years trying to collect all of this information and and really what we needed to be doing is focusing in on a strategy and working to perfect that strategy for ourselves yeah lots of money lots of time gets put into that when really that part of successful trading shouldn't be that big a deal. It really isn't the biggest part of trading, right? I mean, honestly, guys, if <clears throat> if you like the 3-8 trap strategy, how long does it really take you to learn the 3-8 trap strategy? To practice it, to focus on that strategy, it's actually pretty darn simple, isn't it?
so it shouldn't be this process that takes years and years and years to gather that <clears throat> information and knowledge on your trading. But we take that much time because we're scattered. We're all over the place. We, we don't take the time to settle down. We allow our emotions to run our trading and it puts us in this situation where we're just not ever settled, right? To be successful in trading, I think we all have to just settle down. We have to settle into something. And focus on that. There are tens of thousands of different ways to make money in the market. But we don't need to know tens of thousands of things to be successful in the market, do we? <clears throat> we need to develop one strategy and get really good at it and then apply that to the market. Okay. And there's a, obviously more steps that we have to go here <clears throat> through. Um, you guys know that I am a strong, strong believer that one of the puzzle pieces to, to, to be successful in trading is your preparation. Are you ready to trade? Have you put together your trading plan? Have you practiced that trading plan? Have you set up your charts for that trading plan? Are you putting your time and attention and in focus into that trading plan? Preparation in the morning, every single day, getting yourself ready to trade. Am I mentally prepared? How many of you in here have recognized that when you're sick, your trading is compromised? Or when you've had an argument with your spouse that your trading is compromised? Right? We have to put ourselves into that mental place with preparation that says, not only are we prepared business wise, we've got our charts and everything in place, but we're preparing ourselves mentally for the day. Are we ready to trade? Do we know where our positions are, where our risk is, so that we're not emotional on it? Do we know what the market setup is? Are we getting um, overly wound up in the emotion of the morning, the hype, the drama and everything that goes on in the morning um, build up to the open? <clears throat> Are we allowing those influences in and affecting, negatively affecting our ability to quietly look at charts and find quality trades that fit us. So that preparation is kind of a wide scoping thing, right? We, we get ready for our strategy, we practice our strategy, we develop that strategy, we set a set of rules. And then we go beyond that and we start looking at the things affecting the market today, how our current positions are, are our stop losses set? Have we taken profits that we need to be taking? Um, how many positions are you comfortable holding in this current market condition? Should you be pairing back? Should you be adding to? All of those kind of things you need to be thinking about prior to that market open so that you're prepared. You're ready to trade. That mental state that you're in is quiet, focused, and dedicated to your strategy. But isn't it true what happens in the morning is that the market opens, it starts running real fast and all of a sudden we just get all wound up, right? We get all wound up and we can't jump to stocks fast enough. We can't jump to that next trade that's popping up. Just we got to get, can't, can't move around fast enough. And then all of a sudden, all of that preparation all of that work that, we, that we've done goes right out the door.
That's where discipline comes in. We have to have the discipline to stick to our rules and our plan. We can't allow all of the distractions, and there's more distractions than you can possibly deal with in the market, more distractions than you can deal with. We have to eliminate them. We have to become more tunnel visioned, I guess, in a way, so that we are focused on our plan, our strategy, and what we're trying to achieve today, this week, this month, and this year. That's what's the most important, right? Are we progressing? Are we moving forward as we wanted to, to want to do? If the market is just hopping and running really, really fast, we have to slow ourselves down mentally. We have to focus on the charts that we believe are setting up and continue to follow that same strategy and plan because that's what's proven to, to pay us, right? If we've practiced that plan and that's the strategy that we're trading, that's what we need to stick to. And that's where we go into that process and planning. You know, we talk about this a lot, how important it is to follow that process. And I'm, I'm, I'm expanding this process here today to what you should be doing to prepare, right? You know, for me to get all the things done that I do in the morning, to write a blog, to produce a video, to do all of these things, make sure that I'm checking all of my stop losses, make sure that I am reviewing the charts that I need to be paying attention to, make sure I'm considering profit targets and things, whether I should be taking some profits. If I think the market condition is shifting, do I need to adjust? Um, the number of trades and what I'm what I'm doing if I didn't have a schedule of things for me to do I couldn't get it done so our process is also about our organization right we want to be organized we want to be prepared you know something I'm a guy, something I hate to do is clean up my office. <laughs> I hate it. It's just like a little kid. <clears throat> I hate it. But here's something I know that I've learned about myself. That if my office is put together, if I don't have papers and, and you know, lists and everything stacked all over my trading desk, I, I'm calmer, I stay more focused. So it's our process, it's the things <clears throat> that we have to recognize. <clears throat> Same with you, Bob, yeah. The things that you have to recognize that helps put you in that, that work state. Because let's make no mistake here, when the market opens, we're open for business. We need to be prepared to be open for business. <clears throat> Imagine walking into a <clears throat> any kind of store. The shelves are empty. Stuff is stacked around on the floor all over the place. And the employees are running around, the boss is running around like crazy because they open up the door and hey, nothing's ready for the day. So many traders work from that mental state. They're not ready, they're not prepared. Okay, so the planning of your day is just as important as the planning of your trading. We want to have a trading plan, but we have, want to have the planning of the day, the things that we have to accomplish. And by the way, one of the great things about being a trader is we can take time off, right? Hey, if, if life gets in the way, if something comes up, if that's nagging on you, is that going to affect your trading?
It absolutely is. It keeps it. it it's it's like that little. Um, <clears throat> it, it it's like a, a little. I don't know. Something just thumping you in the back of the head all the time, right? Oh, I got to remember to get that. Done. Oh, I got to remember to get that. Done. Oh, I got to remember to get that done. Right? If those are part, things that are in, um, affecting your day, put that in your schedule. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to be here first thing in the morning. I'm going to trade the first couple hours, make sure everything is working out the way I want it to. Then I'm going to get up and I'm going to go do this. Get that taken care of come back don't let those things throughout the day that you know one of the again this is our business so we want to be in the best mental state that we can and we want to make sure our planning fits that so that we can maintain that level thinking all the way through the day that focus that attention okay so think about that plan for your day more than, as much as you're thinking about the plan for each trade we have to think about our plan for our day our week our month where are we going what are we trying to achieve you know would it be a bad idea if every day just to remind yourself you do that little bit of math work say i want to make 20 percent this week this year and you divide that by 12 and i need to make this much per month and i need to make this much per week would it be all that bad in your trading or in your plan for the week to just write down at the top of the notebook pad say hey my i'm trying to make 800 bucks this week that's my focus that's what i'm trying to achieve you see when you have that in front of you like that <clears throat> Doesn't that keep your attention to what you're supposed to be doing instead of hopping around and jumping around and chasing everything that's popping in the market and all all the distractions that come up throughout the day? How are you going to get to your goal if we remain distracted? And you know, we miss this goal this week and we miss it next week and we miss it next week and we miss it next week and it's going to be pretty impossible for you to reach your yearly goal, right? So every week, every day, we need to be zeroed in and focused in on what we're trying to achieve and working toward that. Just write it down. Have that plan. This is my focus. This is what I'm doing to follow it along, okay? I think one of the next keys <clears throat> to success in trading, is, and we talk about this quite a bit, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on this, but it's proper trade selection. And, and I think that proper trade selection comes down to you building that watch list that says, this is where, this is my, <clears throat> this is my trades. I know these stocks are trending. I know these stocks are priced in the place that I can trade them. I know these stocks because I've looked enough through this list that these have pretty good options if we're option trading. These have pretty darn good options. I can trade these stocks. They fit me personally. And this is where I'm going to get my goal money from. It's not going to be for that from that flavor of the day that pops up because of a news report and we run over there we haven't prepared for it we don't know anything about it we don't know if the options are good we we're racing around and what we've done is we've missed out on probably opportunities that are showing up in our list because we're chasing something else <clears throat> Would you, guys, <clears throat> would you guys agree with following a trend? You don't have to chase every stock in the market. It doesn't matter if XYZ made a 20% move today. It doesn't matter because that wasn't your trade anyway.
right? What matters is are you managing your business? This is your business. It's that list of stocks that you're constantly working to maintain. When you're going through your daily work, looking at charts, looking at scans, okay, we're going to be going through this list and tossing stocks out that no longer fit and putting stocks in that have entered a trend or entered a pattern that we like. That's right. Eliminate the noise. Focus on your business and what you're trying to achieve. And it's just that simple common sense, right? If you have all the distractions throughout the day, and one of those distractions that we talk about a lot is not knowing what kind of a trader you are. Are there folks still in here struggling with that? I, I, I know there are. They wanna be an intraday trader, and they wanna be a swing trader, and they wanna be you know, four or five other different things. They want to trade gaps and they want to trade, you know, all of these different things. What kind of a trader are you? Are you a daily chart trader? Is that going to be your primary focus? And here's what I would suggest. It's okay to have another focus only after you've mastered one. Does that make sense, guys? Don't try to pick up some other time frame or something like that until you have success with one, until you're comfortable, that's ingrained, that's working, you're making your weekly um, goals, you're doing all of those things. Don't add something else. Remove that clutter, remove that confusion from your trading. Because if we're too scattered, we just can't do it anymore, right? The human being can only focus on so many things at one time. If you're like me, I can focus on about one thing. <laughs> it's amazing that I can show a chart and talk and get it through to people at the same time, to tell you the truth. <laughs> Walking and chewing gum was never one of my, one of my best talents, okay? <laughs> This is really, really important stuff, right? We have to focus on what we're doing and focus on our plan and what our goal is for the week and stay dedicated to that plan. Try to eliminate all of those distractions, all of those um, things that pull you away from that thought process that you need for the day. Does that make some sense, guys? So when we're looking at those proper trade selections, we need to be staying within our own boat, right? We're looking for that proper trade selection. We shouldn't be chasing around with everything that's popping up today, right? If it's not in our watch list, if it's not in our little sphere of influence, it's not in our boat, we don't want to be standing up in a rowboat trying to hop to different boats. What's going to happen when, that, when you do that? You're going to end up getting pretty wet, right? <laughs> <clears throat> falling in the water, drowning maybe. Yeah, exactly, splash. Stay in your lane, right? That's where we're comfortable. That's where we're pl our plan is set. Stay within your lane. When that starts really turning out profits and it's consistent and it's becoming very easy for you to stay in your lane and do all of those things, you're maintaining everything that's going on well, okay, now, now it's probably okay if, if you say, hey, I wanna look at maybe another strategy or something else, try it for a little bit, just make sure it's not affecting your current profitability. 
See, I've gone to the other direction. I've gone to the place where I don't care. I, I really don't care about all the other strategies out there. It, it doesn't bother me because I've made my career trading a couple simple patterns. And, and to be honest, I'm just lazy enough that I don't want to do anything else. That's what I want to do. I just want to stay in my lane and focus on my trades. Because I've proven to myself that's where the money is. Okay? So build that quality watch list that fits you and stay in your lane. Focus on those charts, those trades. Prepare. Hey, this trade is setting up. This trade is setting up. You know, one thing I got to say about Mike Peterson, um, it, it seems invariably when I talk with him, you know, I'll, I'll call, hey, what are you doing tonight? Well, I'm going to just sit down and look at some charts. He does that on Saturdays. He does it on Sundays. And what he's doing is he's preparing for his week. He's preparing those stocks that could be setting up and he has to focus on for the week. That's awesome, Lauren. That's awesome. So make those selections and prepare. Okay. We can do homework ahead of time, right? We can see a great chart on Sunday and say, hey, this could be setting up and then take a look and see whether or not it has options that are even worth us wasting another minute with it. What it does the next day literally really doesn't matter if the options aren't there and we can't trade it, right? Um, Lauren, um, the three ain't trap strategy. Well, let me just ask guys in the room if you would just type a why if you believe the three ain't trap strategy has been good for you in your trading. Okay, so don't take my word for it. MT, 80% win rate this year. Congrats, buddy. That's awesome. The three inch trap strategy is so easy and, and because it's so very visual. Okay. And um, you just have to practice just like anything else and do it. But, you know, like I said at the on that first slide, we don't want to spend all of our time here. If we spend all of our time here, and we spend weeks, months, even years here. That's not what we want. We want to simplify what we're doing and move through this process quicker. That's right. Master it. Be the best at it you can be. Okay. Now, from proper trade selection and that kind of thing, we have to get to, pro to trade management. This, this, of course, is part of your, um, your trading plan. How are we going to manage a trade? Now, you know, I take this a little bit further than most people do. Most people think, well, trade management is just your stop loss. It's not, right? Trade management is the whole gamut. How many trades do you have on? Do I have too much risk in the market? Should I be pulling back some of that risk in the market? Should I be taking partial profits on this trade to reduce the pressure in this trade? Should I be adjusting my stop on this trade? The stock is gapped up in the morning. Should I just take the Take the profit and walk away. Gaps are gifts and let it go. Trade management encompasses a whole bunch of different things that we need to think about. And it all starts when you plan your trade, right? The planning, I don't know if that's even, yeah, well. The planning of your trade is where trade management begins. It's not after you're in the trade.
It's when we find that trade, we look and say, okay, now does this trade fit my risk tolerance? Does this trade have the potential to make me the kind of profit I need to make to hit my goal? We need to know those things before we ever enter the trade. Right? We can't just jump on a stock and then try to plan it afterward and realize that, well, that sucked. Uh, uh, what was I thinking? We've all taken those trades in the past, right? Maybe you're in some of them right now. Or you look at that trade right now and you go, what the heck was I thinking? Right? I do that today. If I get out of my lane, if I get out of my zone, it's pretty easy to break down on your rules and jump on something without thinking it through, right? Yeah, that's very dangerous, isn't it, Lauren? It's a good way to lose a lot of money. So that trade planning, I'll guarantee you MT is putting time into his trade planning. To get that 80% win-loss ratio, he's putting that time into that planning. He's not hesitating to take profits. That's one of the places that people fail often in trade management. They fail to take their profit. Why do we fail to take our profit? Because we're greedy. We want more. And we forget to follow our plan. What are we trying to achieve at the end of this week? How much do we need to make to reach our goals? See, we let greed get in the way of us taking profits. And we've all done this, right? Greed got in the way, we didn't take our profits, and then what happened? The market reversed and we ended up with a loss. So we need to think about that, right? We need to think about what our goal is. We need to look at that number. And I really think this is a, a, an idea, guys. Just You can even take a sticky note. Get yourself a big red Sharpie or something and write down, this is what I'm trying to achieve this week. And stick it right to your trading computer, right to your trading screen, your platform screen. This is what I'm trying to do. Stick it to your chart screen. I don't care what it is, but make sure you're looking at it because it keeps you disciplined. It keeps you focused, right? I've told you guys that one of the things that I failed at over and over and over is I would see a chart in a trade and I would absolutely ignore that there was a massive resistance in price over here. Okay, Massive resistance in price back over here. I wouldn't even see it. I wouldn't even look at it. I would buy this position right here, right near price resistance. I had such a complex about this because I could have sworn somebody had a camera in my office. Because every time I pulled the trigger on the trade, I would almost immediately get punished. The problem was I wasn't doing the job, right? I wasn't focusing on the right things. I wasn't focusing on my plan. I wasn't planning the trade. Why would I plan a trade? Why would anyone plan a trade? Hey, I'm going to enter it here and I think it can only get, you know, another 50 cents higher before it runs into resistance. There's too many other good trades out there to mess around with one that may have little potential. Let's look for the trades that have the potential that make us money. 
sure that stock could blow right through that resistance and keep going higher. But you know what we have to do with that? Is just wait for the next entry. After it breaks through that big resistance and holds support, now we've got a really good trade setup, right? We don't have to worry about that. We don't have to fret about that. We don't have to, you know, wrangle around and just, you know, put ourselves into this uh, emotional pain. Look for the trades that set up today, that fit today. And focus on that goal. That's what we're trying to achieve. And then the last thing that I think that's really critical to your common sense um, trading style is any business, guys, has to evaluate the results. Okay? At the end of the week, when you go through and do your evaluation, my goal was 800. I made 500. Okay? What happened here? It may have been that you had three really good trades where you followed the rules and one trade, one trade where you broke the rules and it prevented you from making your goal. We have to evaluate how we're doing with our plan. Right? We have to look back and say, okay, this one worked, this one worked, this one worked. I followed my rules here and here and here. This one sucked on, you know, I, I don't know what I was thinking when I looked at that. And then we have to adjust. Okay? The easiest way to get profitable in trading is just do more of what works and less of what doesn't. So when you find that example, as a matter of fact, we I was doing some individual coaching for for a person that um, that that person was had about a 50 50 win loss with the with the three eight trap strategy. And I said, OK, let's go through. Let's let's look at your losing trades. You guys know the three eight trap strategy requires you know, if we let's go find a, okay, Coke requires that the three moves up, pulls back, holds above the eight and buyer step in. So winning trade right there. Well, what was happening on every single one of this person's losing trades that they showed me that day is what they did is they chased the crossover. The stock crossed over, didn't pull back and hold support or prove support, and they consequently had losses on every single one of those trades. Without that evaluation, they're destined to repeat that, right? Without that knowledge of, of saying, oh man, I, I'm breaking this rule. They're destined to repeat that. How are you going to grow your account or improve as a trader if you don't evaluate and find out what's going on? Right? Now, I'll tell you what's happened since then. Being more disciplined to his rules and the setup that he's trading, this person is now hitting 70, 75% winning trades. because he's not breaking his rules. Right? So we have to go back and evaluate. We have to look at it critically, just like if you, you know, got called on the carpet by your boss and why are you doing this? You have to address that yourself. Hey, I'm messing this thing up. Settle down, man. Write a rule, fix that problem, 
and continue to work on those evaluations because every little tiny improvement. Here's the thing. How many of you have ever done this? I know I've done it about 100,000 times, I, I swear. I try something. I go to a webinar. I try something. And I'm all excited about it. I get in the market and for a couple of weeks and it just, I just get killed. Okay, well, that doesn't work. I need to find something else. And I continue to jump ship. Just continue. Just, okay, I know it, it's got to be something else. Learn something new. No, tr change everything up. Start over again. And you know, guys, most of the time, that strategy was just fine had I just stopped, evaluated the losing trades, I would have found out that I was breaking some rule, that I was violating some method, methodology in the strategy, and it was creating these losses. See, the 3A trap strategy is so easy because it's very visual and it's very disciplined in the rules that we talk about in the strategy. If we just follow those, we have a high expectancy of a win. Isn't that what we all want? It's just something that gives us that high expectancy of a win. We don't know that it's gonna win every time, but it gives us that high expectancy that high probability that it's going to produce at least some kind of profit. Now, there's tens of thousands of strategies out there, probably more, that can be just as effective as a 3A trap. If you follow the rules and stay dedicated to the plan, evaluate and adapt. Would you guys agree? It's about getting that strategy, putting those rules together, put that plan together, being prepared, doing all the things that we have talked about here this morning, and then at the end of the period, whether it be at the end of the day, end of the week, evaluate. I really recommend if you're struggling as a trader, and a lot of folks are probably struggling, if you actually calculated out your win-loss ratio, you're probably pretty close to 50-50. The problem is the 50 that you're losing on is preventing you from making any money. So let's find out with the strategy that you're trading, what's creating those losses. Sometimes it's just the market that, you know, throws lemons at you. That's all it is. You followed your rules, you did your plan, the market throws lemon at, lemons at you. Well, let me, let me suggest this. How many times have you been trading your strategy and you think you're following your rules and you just keep getting lemons thrown at you. Isn't that telling you something? Something has changed in the market. I need to pull back. Because I have a strategy here with a high expectancy rate. Something has changed. Volatility has changed. Something about the sentiment of the market has changed that's creating this situation. I need to pull back and evaluate. Does that make sense, guys? We have to recognize the changes. We must evaluate what's happening and adapt our trading as necessary. You know, when the market gets really volatile, volatile you guys know what I do. I trade less. I don't try to keep port forcing trades. I don't, to me, I, I want to keep the money in my account. So when the market comes back to where I want it to be, I'm ready to trade again without having been all beat up. And I know this for, for fact, I don't have to trade every day to be successful. That's an absolute fallacy out there. It's all been bred in by this whole thing of day trading where you've got to just this quick, immediate response and all of this kind of stuff. That's just, guys, the truth of the matter is most day traders lose money. There's a very select few that have it figured out that they can do it consistently.
We don't have to trade every day as a swing trader to be successful. What we have to do is stay dedicated to our rules and our plan and our goals. Think about that common sense and how so many times we toss that common sense out because we just want someone to, or something to give us an assurance. You know, we want an indicator to give us an assurance. How many of you in the past picked up an indicator from some webinar and just thought this was it? This was the thing that was going to turn things around for you. And then in a week or two, find out, nope, that that didn't do it. You get hammered down enough times in that, your confidence goes away. And now we can't trade at all. The problem was not necessarily the indicator. The problem was we weren't focused to our strategy. Yeah, the money goes away too. Okay. Money goes away too. So we have to think about what is our lane? Are we in our boat? Are we in our lane? And stay in that lane until we get the quality of trading results that we're looking for. Now, one thing I, I wanna mention is, it's really, really important when you're setting those goals and thinking about those plans, is that you're not overreaching in those and making it impossible for you to do that. I've, uh, it's pretty common. Um, someone will hire me for coaching and they're trading a five or $6,000 account. And I'll say, well, what, what's your goal here? Well, I need to make 3000 a month. I, I mean, if we're going to be completely unrealistic about what can be achieved, uh, you're going to go broke doing that. Have a realistic goal. Have a guide, something that says this is where I'm going. Now, you can always beat that goal, right? You have your goal. It's 800 bucks. The market is working great. You're finding trade after trade after trade. That $800 gets blown by in the first two weeks. You're past your goal. You keep trading. You keep following your plan. Some months, you blow that goal right out of the water. And then there's some months where the market's just throwing lemons at you. And you just have to back away so that you don't lose the money that you've made, right? Evaluate and adjust. Keep yourself on that level playing field. Focus, attention, detail of your trading. That's the end of that presentation. And I hope you guys got something out of that because it really is that common sense that, that helps you do that. I'm gonna spend just another minute or two here on, on a couple of things. I, I get lots of comments, um, questions and comments of, of different, I'm just gonna pick any chart here, um, about, well, what constitutes a buy signal? Well, if you're trading a plan, shouldn't you know what your buy signal is? Because we're trading a plan, right? We're trading this strategy where we have a trending stock, we're looking for stocks pulling back, showing a buy signal. Okay, what's that buy signal look like? Well, it's holding price support, it's holding trends someplace, right? It's buyers stepping in. They're pushing it up. Is there a guarantee that trade will work? 
No. But the reason we pick it here, the reason we do what we do, is because if it fails, we lose very little money in that trade. We know because we're trading a trend, if we follow our plan and we follow a stock that has concise price action, the odds are in our favor for a win. They're in our favor. Okay, so we develop that confidence in the expectancy rate of what we do, and we just wait for those trades to occur. Now, it may be a bullish engulfing candle, it may be a kicker, it may be a, it may be a morning star, it may be a piercing pattern, it may be a, a variety of different ways that that stock can set itself up. But the same thing is always going to be true about a trade, is that it needs to be holding into our pattern, right? It has to be holding that pattern. It has to be holding that trend. That's where we're going to find our buy signals. That's where we're going to find our success. So back up for a second and just apply, just get, take a breath. I don't know what to do here. Close your eyes for a second, take a breath, and focus on some common sense. Is this trade fitting my plan? Is it fitting my rules? Is the tolerance to my risk on this trade acceptable? Does it have the potential of making my goals? If you go through a thought process like that, you're gonna find there's a lot of trades that look great that you're just gonna walk away from because it has too much risk. Resistance is too close. It's not really fitting your pattern. Not as clean as you'd like it to be. The stock is too jittery, too many wicks and tails. It's all over the place. Volatility is high. But when you have that quiet focus, you're also going to find that chart that says, this is it. This is my trade. That's what I've been looking for. And you know, the thing is, guys, the best trades are always going to be in your watch list. They're gonna be in your watch list because you've prepared for that, right? You've prepared that watch list for a purpose. You've been watching those trades, evaluating those trades. Those trades are marked up. They're always going to be the best trade because we've paid attention to them. We've watched them. We know how they move. We've been waiting for it to pull back to support, waiting for it to test trend. Okay. So focus on those things, focus on those rules, focus on those plans. Focus on your trade setup. Okay. Well, Philip, I, you know, I just want to say uh, what I was just talking about. Does it fit you? Does BHC fit you?
we can all see that this is breaking down. If you follow the 3A trap, if you're looking for a long trade, is there a long trade here? No. If you use the 3A trap strategy, is there a short trade here? No. How could it be a long, Philip? Three is crossed down through the eight. It's crossed down through the vault, the the trendinator, the the seventeen. This is failing at this moment. The three eight. Now it may be trying to come back and test this support. But what's the rule? The stock will have to cross back above and then prove that it can hold before there's a trade there. It has to cross back up and then prove. Just like it did here. Cross back up and then prove. That's all we have to do, guys. Follow the rules. Apply your common sense to this. Couldn't this right here turn into this right here? Where we crossed up from red to green, failed back through, and then we rest, and there's our failure pattern. Okay, that's all we need to do. Hope that was helpful. And, 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 and I'm not picking on you. I, I'm not picking on you either because I want you to understand that. It's... Understanding whether this trade fits you and is the right setup for the strategy should be really easy if you have your plan. It should be really easy. It's very visual. This is a very, very visual strategy. It's easy to see. Now, it's a choice that you guys have to make. I've made that choice. I have found by my own testing that when I chase the crossovers, I cannot have more than a 50-50 win-loss ratio. That's not acceptable to me. I don't want a 50-50 win-loss ratio. It means I'm working hard and going nowhere. You'll have to just decide that for yourself on those crossover trades. I have eliminated that from my trading. I know that if I just wait, I have a very high expectancy of wins. Okay. Yeah, TC2000 can scan um, any time frame that you're looking for. And that's all, you know, Tim, you just said the, the most important thing there. It's practice, right? My good buddy, Mike Peterson, paper traded for nearly a year before he went live. Practiced. He put in the effort. And you know, if you go to his house today, 
he'll almost always have his trading platform open and his paper trading platform open because he's practicing something else in his paper trade all the time. Okay, so practice. There's there's no shame in saying, "Hey, I don't, I don't, I don't feel comfortable yet. I I don't understand it yet." And practice a little bit more. And there's no shame in that. There's, in fact, that's the smartest thing you can do. Build that confidence that what you're seeing is right. Okay. Well, you do hang with him. He's here every day. He's here every day. So we get a share. We get a share with all the members of the room. Pay attention to what those members post. Okay. Um, there's no back test. The back test should, your back test, Sam, should be visual anyway. Did the strategy work or not? Okay, you've got to build that confidence by your own eyesight. That's the way you're going to build that confidence in that strategy is by your own eyesight, not by a scan. Guys, and here's what I'm going to tell you about scanning. As soon as you can afford it, pick up the, the LTA scanner. You can run scans in TC2000 and spend all day doing that, just sorting through charts and sorting through charts and sorting through charts. You want to really be efficient in your trading? Spend 97 bucks and buy LTA. Put your watch list into LTA and it's just going to bring the trades to you. Seriously, guys, it's the cheapest employee for your business you're ever going to have. And it just plain works. This is a simple strategy, if you like the 3-8. It is really cool, isn't it, Tim? Following along, waiting for those trades to occur, yep. I do still have Trader Vision, yes. Um, what you need to do, Lauren, is ask Ed. Ask Ed. We kind of backed away from the development of Trader Vision. People just, I don't know, um, rejected the idea that planning was just too much effort for them. They didn't want to do it. Consequently, they're still struggling as traders. Pop over into room three, ask Ed about that. He can get you set up.
You betcha. Guys, I want to thank you for being here today. I really hope you got something out of this. And, and I hope you can um, you know, apply these things to your trading and just realize that trading doesn't have to be that complicated. We can make it as simple as we want and we can be very successful with a simple strategy. We don't have to know every strategy out there. We just have to be very competent on our strategy. And that competency, oops, I didn't realize I had that up. That competency is a simple, well thought out, carefully ordered common sense. That'll make you competent in the market.